welcome back everyone to Formula One Legends. In episode number two, we're going to be taking a look at one of Britain's most underrated Formula One world champions. Teammates such as Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, Jacques Villeneuve, driving for teams such as Benetton, Williams, Renault, McLaren and winning the world championship with Braun. In today's episode, we're going to be talking, of course, about Jensen Button. So sit back, relax, grab a drink and a few snackies. Welcome to Formula One Legends. Welcome to the career of Jensen Button. Jensen Alexander Leon Button was born on the 19th of January 1980. Froome, Somerset, a Southwest boy like myself, to mother, South African Simone Leon, and British rallycross driver John Button, who was well known in the UK throughout most of the 1970s for his so called Colorado Beetle Volkswagen in rallycross. And the name Jensen actually was born through his father's relationship with Fia's rival in rallycross, Erling Jensen. In Jensen's early life, BMX seemed to be the way forward. However, by age just eight, had already made his debut in karts, the Clay Pigeon Raceway. And by the time he was age nine, he came first in the British Super Prix and had won all 34 races in the British Cadet Karting Championship a few years later in 1991, and obviously won the title with it with Team Wright Karts. Further successes followed with three triumphs in the British Open Kart Championship, and in 1997, won the Ayrton Senna Memorial Cup, becoming the youngest driver ever to do so in the European Super A Championship. By the time he was 18, Button had moved into car racing rather than karting, and winning the British Formula Ford Championship with Hayward Racing and triumphing again at Formula Ford at Brands Hatch, I think it was fair to say this is a man who seemed to be going straight to the top. And just to make things even sweeter, even spicier, at the end of 1998, won the annual McLaren Autosport Young Driver Award. His prize included a test with the McLaren Formula One team. For 1999, he moved into Formula Three, the next step up of the ladder. He won three times, Thruxton, Prembury, and at Silverstone, he did finish as the top rookie in the standings and finished third overall. But that wasn't it. In 1999, Jensen also raced at the Spa 24 Hours, finished second at the Korea Super Prix, and finished second again, this time at the famous Macau Grand Prix, losing by just 0.035, three thousandths of a second behind winner Darren Manning. But 1999 was such an impressive year for Jensen Button. And after testing with McLaren, thanks to the Autosport Award and also the Prost team in Formula One, for the year 2000, with Alexander Zanardi moving on from Williams, the vacant seat was available for Jensen. Frank Williams made the offer, and so for the year 2000, after racing in Formula Three only the year before, Jensen Button would start his Formula One career. Partnering alongside Ralph Schumacher at Williams for the 2000 season, Jensen was only supposed to hold that seat until the team could get Juan Pablo Montoya out of his drive at IndyCar. So Jensen already knew he was on borrowed time and had to impress in that first year if he wanted to entice another team to take the risk on the British youngster. Debut, the 2000 Australian Grand Prix, was a bit of a stinker. Sorry Jensen, crashed in practice, qualified second last and in the race, recovered well, was on to score a point actually. However, his engine retired just 11 laps from the end. In the first six races of the season, he only outqualified teammate Ralph Schumacher twice but was close on pace and in the second race of the year in Brazil became the youngest ever driver to score a point in Formula 1 with a sixth place finish. More points followed only two rounds later in Silverstone. He scored a career best finish in round 11 for the Belgian Grand Prix, finishing the season eighth overall in the standings, 12 points in a fairly competitive Williams car. However, 
he failed to beat teammate Ralph Schumacher and Jensen's career best finish of fourth was not as good as Schumacher's three podium finishes over the season and Schumacher's 24 points compared to Jensen's 12. And as mentioned earlier, Williams were intent on signing Montoya. Jensen had not done enough to beat Schumacher to guarantee his future at the team and prayed another team took the gamble. And luckily for Jensen, that's exactly what another team did. This time, it was with Benetton. So for the year 2001, not only was Jensen moving to a team with plenty of Formula One history, he was moving alongside experienced teammate Giancarlo Fisichella. The team themselves had also been recently purchased by Renault, and this was Benetton's final year in Formula One. So not only was Jensen trying to re-establish himself amongst the Formula One greats, but he was also trying to prove himself to Renault he was worthy of another shot in the following season. There's no denying, 2001 was nowhere near as strong as the year 2000 for Williams. Over the entire season, Jensen only scored points at one Grand Prix, two overall, meaning he finished 17th in the standings. Teammate Fizzy Keller had fared much better over the course of the year, just finishing outside the top 10, scoring on three occasions over the season. However, a third place finish at Spa comfortably put him ahead of Button in the pecking order. But Briatore was kind enough to give him another chance in 2000, and so for the first year in Renault's return to Formula One, Jensen Button lined up alongside Jarno Trulli, another experienced driver in Formula One. And for the first time in his Formula One career, Jensen was finally able to beat a teammate charging out of the blocks, finishing fourth in two of the opening three rounds, a fifth place in San Marino left him seventh in the standings, 14 points compared to Truly's ninth, a very impressive season from Button. But despite those impressive performances, the story isn't quite the fairy tale Jensen probably would have wanted it to be to end his Renault career. Only one round after his home Grand Prix at Silverstone, at the French Grand Prix, it was decided, Renault's home event, it was decided that Button would not race for the team in the year 2003. He would be replaced by Fernando Alonso. A decision that was met with a hell of a lot of backlash for Briatore. And whilst with the benefit of hindsight, it all worked out, there's no denying that Button probably should have been given another chance at Renault. But he had proved in 2003 he was ready. He was going to be able to win in Grand Prix if he could find himself in the right car and in the team that actually believed in him. So moving to BAR in 2003 was a risk. It was a sideward step, a team to this point that were unproven in Formula One. And to make matters slightly worse for Jensen, his teammate for the first season at BAR was world champion Jacques Villeneuve. 2003 would be the first of three relatively successful years at BAR for Jensen Button. His first season partnering Villeneuve was a strong one. Strong indeed, comfortably beating Villeneuve so much so that by the final round of the season in Japan, the team dropped Villeneuve completely in favour of Takuma Sato, a teammate that would stay with Button for the rest of his time at BAR and still Button would establish himself as the clear number one. Alongside Villeneuve, Button was able to secure ninth in the standings with Villeneuve only in P16. 2003 saw plenty of points finishes for Button but still was missing that elusive podium. But don't worry, 2004, his second season was incredible. Clearly his best in Formula 1 to date, scoring his first ever podium in Malaysia in only round 2 of the 2004 season. And by the time we showed up to San Marino, only 4 rounds into the 2004 season, not only had Button scored 2 third place finishes and a second place finish, he also had secured his first ever Formula 1 pole position, only to be beaten out by Michael Schumacher during the San Marino Grand Prix. Button scored a total of 10 podiums in 17 races in the 2004 season, finishing third overall in the standings, only behind the two Ferrari boys of Schumacher and Barrichello. 
So going into 2005, the team were optimistic they could bring that challenge one step higher and potentially fight for a title. But it wasn't quite that straightforward. Williams, in the off-season of 2004, had offered Button a contract to return to the British champions, and Button was willing to go. The contract ultimately fell apart, but relationships between Button and BAR had soured somewhat. And to make matters worse, 2005, only four rounds into the 2005 season, Jensen Button had retired twice and was disqualified despite getting a podium in San Marino due to the team running an illegal extra fuel tank, resulting in the next two rounds, the team being banned from attending whatsoever. The team also failed to start the 2005 US Grand Prix due to all Michelin tyre teams failing to start in America. But the season wasn't atrocious. After the non-start of the American Grand Prix, Button scored in all of the remaining 10 rounds, including podiums in Germany and Belgium. But 2005 would be the final season Button would race for BAR, with the team evolving into Honda for the 2006 season and the car it proved was pretty good. Much better than the 2005 BAR. Button scored a podium in Malaysia, the second round of the season, where he scored his own first podium in Formula One. He now scored his first podium for Honda in Formula One. Other notable results included a podium in the final round of the season in Brazil, and at the 2006 Hungarian Grand Prix, Jensen finally, after six full seasons in Formula One, secured his first ever Formula One victory. A crazy Grand Prix weekend that saw Alonso, Schumacher, Raikkonen all crash out of the race. Button, in wet conditions, proved to be a master. A thoroughly deserved first ever Grand Prix victory. And it wouldn't be his last. However, it would be his only race win for Honda. And in 2007, Rubens Barrichello, Button's teammate, failed to score at all. Jensen himself only scored on three occasions. A finish of fifth in China was his only real result of note, finishing in 15th place in the standings behind rookie Sebastian Vettel, who had only driven in eight of the 17 Grand Prix. And just when Honda didn't think it could get even worse, 2008, a year where they hoped they could recover from their awful 2007, whilst the livery was slightly nicer, the car was much worse. Button scored once over the course of the entire season, a sixth place finish in the fourth round of the year in Spain. Barrichello scored on four occasions this time round, with a surprise podium at Silverstone during heavy rain conditions but thanks to the stock market crash in late 2008, just weeks before the start of pre-season testing for the 2009 season, Honda pulled out of Formula One. Honda, despite having a car, despite having drivers, a factory, had to stop their Formula One program. And with just days until pre-season testing, Ross Braun stepped in, bought the team, for what is reported as only one pound. It's a little bit more complex than that, but we'll say for now, he bought the team for one pound from Honda, creating Braun GP. And in February 2009, being supplied with Mercedes-Benz engines, the incredible innovation that Honda were able to do over the winter of 2008 with the double diffuser, they went into the first race of the season, not only as complete underdogs, but also as title favourites. 1-2 in qualifying for Button and Barrichello. Where had this come from? The team were on the brink of never racing again. And yet here they are showing up to the first race of the season, proving the underdogs can do it. Jensen converted that pole position into victory, his second in his Formula One career. Malaysia again, back-to-back -back victories, this time only scoring half points, thanks to the race being cancelled halfway through due to torrential rain in Malaysia. But that didn't stop the charging brawn. No siree, that did not stop him. And Button, in the first seven rounds, won six of the Grand Prix. Finishing third in China was the only blemish on his perfect record, meaning he had one of the best starts ever to a Formula One season. But after that win, in the seventh round in Turkey, 
Button wouldn't win again in the entire 2009 season, finishing sixth at his home Grand Prix in Silverstone was the first of those results where he didn't stand on the podium and actually would only stand on the podium twice more in 2009. A second place at Monza and a third place in the final race of the season. And although Barrichello himself was able to pick up two victories in the second half of the year, Button's closest rival wasn't his teammate. It was Sebastian Vettel looking for his own first world title. Seb, who I'm sure we will do in later episodes of this series, scored three victories up until the final round of the season and was slowly starting to prove himself in Formula One. And he had emerged as a late title contender, but after a disappointing result in Brazil, Jensen Button, after the incredible form at the beginning of the season, was able to wrap up his first and only world title brawn their only season in Formula 1 at the same weekend where not only they got their first world driver's title, also thanks to Barrichello's 8th place finish that weekend, wrapped up the Constructors' title, the only team ever to have a 100% title winning record. But for 2010, the team were bought out by Mercedes. Jensen would move on from the team to McLaren, Barrichello would move to Williams. And just a quick caveat, if you want to learn more about the 2009 season, I'm going quite quick in these Legends videos, but if you want to know more about 2009, Cranky Yankee F1 did a whole video talking just about the 2009 season and Braun GP, I would highly recommend it. As we now move on to Button's final stage of his career, McLaren. After winning the 2009 title, Jensen got his dream move to McLaren a team where he was able to finally embed himself within the entire organisation, a team where he started in 2010 and finished his career in 2016, returning in 2017 for one final race. For the first three seasons of Button's time at McLaren, he was up against Lewis Hamilton, McLaren's golden boy, and in his first season, whilst Hamilton was right in the title hunt down to the final race weekend, Button would only finish one place behind Hamilton in the standings. Lewis finished fourth, Jensen finished fifth. Jensen won twice over the course of 2010, victory in the second round of the season in Australia and also China, but Hamilton seemed to have the edge just over his British teammate. 2011 though, Button's second season with the British team was much, much better. And actually, though Sebastian Vettel was the clear title runaway, over 120 points in front of second place man Button, it was Jensen who was his closest title rival, claiming three victories in 2011, Hungary, Japan, but the best of those, perhaps his best of his career, and perhaps one of the greatest victories of all time in Formula One, six pit stops for Jensen, penalties, crashed into Hamilton, crashed into Alonso, seemed like a mess of a weekend. But an incredible final stint in wet conditions meant he overtook Sebastian Vettel on the final lap in the second sector, claiming victory. Hamilton struggled in 2011, won three Grand Prix himself, but wasn't as consistent as Button and finished 50 points behind his teammate. Jensen had proved he was ready to take the fight to Hamilton, and 2012 would prove to be the final season these two would be teammates. And it got off to the perfect start for Jensen, winning in the opening round of the season in Melbourne, and would be the start of the streak, the famous streak in 2012, for seven different winners in the first seven races. And Hamilton was the final of those seven in Canada. Hamilton would win three more Grand Prix in 2012, Button only two, but this was a car that in winter testing looked to be the real deal. It looked to be one of McLaren's best in years, perhaps their best since 2008, but reliability really hurt them over the course of the year, especially on Lewis Hamilton's side of the garage. Ultimately, Hamilton left at the end of the season. Jensen stayed, but the final race of the year in Brazil, Button claimed victory after Hamilton and Hulkenberg fighting for the lead made contact and both ended out of the Grand Prix. Jensen Button 
would claim his final ever victory in Formula One. 2013 would be the first season since 2008 where Jensen would not score a single podium over the course of the season. Teammate Perez also didn't score a podium despite impressing with Sauber the year before and ultimately Sergio, as soon as he was in McLaren, was out at the end of the season. And 2014, the year of the hybrid engines, McLaren had a Mercedes engine and finally they were back on the podium the first race of the season. On debut, Kevin Magnussen, a P2 finish after Ricardo was disqualified, leaving Jensen Button classified third for his final ever Formula One podium. But 2014, the final year of McLaren Mercedes, would not improve from there. A best place finish of fourth in Brazil was Button's only real result of note, finishing all the way down in eighth in the standings, 126 points, Kevin Magnussen only on 55. And once again for 2015, McLaren would take out their youngster in their team. Button would stay, but radical changes were made to try and bring the team back to the front. In was Fernando Alonso. He'd been at McLaren before in 2007 and it hadn't worked out, but they needed a proven driver alongside Button and both of them could take him forward again. But that wasn't it. In came Honda. A relationship that had so much promise, but as we all know, soured so, so quickly. Between Jensen and Alonso, 13 retirements over the course of the 2015 season, only six points finishes behind the two world champions. Button did beat out Alonso 16 points to 11, but 16th and 17th in the standings was certainly not where a team such as McLaren should be. However, there was hope that the team had learned, Honda had learned, and that in 2016, a revival may be on the cards. And in the early stages of the 2016 season, it seemed to be that may be the case. Button scoring three times in the opening six races, and after Alonso suffering a heavy crash in Australia, the first round of the season, Van Dorn made his Formula One debut and also scored in the second round of the season in Bahrain. Button finished 15th overall in the standings. Alonso had a mighty season, finishing 10th in the standings, but Jensen had fallen out of love with Formula One, but he wasn't in Formula One to finish 15th. He wasn't a driver that felt he should be fighting at the back of the grid, he wanted to be at the front. And whilst he'd been in Formula One for 16 full seasons, by the end of 2016, Jensen made the brutal decision to retire from Formula One. With Fernando Alonso overseas hunting the Triple Crown at the Indy 500, Jensen would return for one final race in Formula One at the 2017 Monaco Grand Prix. And whilst it wasn't the dream result he was looking for after making contact with Sauber Pascal Verline, ultimately retiring himself from the Grand Prix, it was great to have Jensen in one final race in Formula One. Though, Button hasn't hung up his helmet just yet. In 2018, competing in Super GT, with teammate Naoki Yamamoto won the championship at the first time of asking. Jensen has also tried his hand at the virtual Grand Prix a few weekends ago now in Bahrain and is also a father to his own son, Hendrix Button, who may himself venture to Formula One in the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the career of Formula One legend Jensen Button. Apologies if the latter stages was a little bit rushed but I don't want you here all day so if you've got any feedback in the comments below I would love to hear it I hope you've very much enjoyed episode two of Formula One Legends if you've got any hopes for the next episode or any guesses of who's next on the list put them down in the comments section below thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Formula One Legends